crash. Because, I mean, first of all, being a Bitcoin dev, I want to have this Bitcoin. I can just every day from people for like a year or two to get it in software. Not necessarily the easiest process, but it's plausible. And secondly, like there's a lot of use cases for things like this around PGP, smart contracts, and so on, where I won't want to specify cryptographically set conditions. And so you want to get into Bitcoin. Well, it'd be nice, but it's not priority number one. Just so my detection outside compiler to Bitcoin scripts. Well, this this thing, um, what I'm doing, I wouldn't even compile it. Mm -hmm. um, like what I'm actually writing right now is. So I'm representing this as what I would call Merkleized S expressions. You know, if you remember your list, S expressions are just expressions of either atoms or um, atoms or consoles. And you know, there's your atom check state operator, another atom there in consoles, um, creating lists of things. Be exact, um, creating um, tr trees. And with this, well, you can go hash all this stuff. You can go to find ways of hashing of key, of hashing check sig, hashing the consoles. And now this means this entire expression can be turned into you know, some, some digest, right? And that would be O, X, B, C, D, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, much in the same way that you can hash a Merkle tree. And you can imagine, for instance, in the context of, say, PGP, I could say, rather than having my PGP key be a pub key, I could have my PGP key be the hash of some of the expression. In this really trivial example, it's not that useful, although it does help me do multi-sig. PGP can't do multi-sig right now. And had you built it, you could do multi-sig right out of the box. And that's kind of cool. More interesting though is if you make this stuff evaluate conditions. For instance, I might want to say, well, normally normally I will say my signature is valid. Right? If some master pub key signs off on it. But I have an alternate route, which is to say, and check sig master on. might have had enough in brackets. <laughs> but I could go say, all right, so we can use master pub key, or we can check a signature of some master pub key, right, essentially master pub key checking you know, some expression in another signature, and that's the delegated expression. And if that all is correct, well, if the expression itself returns true, then we're good to go. And well, what could be done in that expression? I might say, well, I will temporarily give you the right to go sign on my behalf for the purpose of a software release. So this expression might be something like, and what's then time? So imagine if this expression was saying, if the current time is less than, 
you know, April 1st, 2017, and the check seek for Bob who have delegated authority of releasing software for, and also some pilot conditions that check this is an actual software release. Well, now I can go delegate my authority to Bob to release software. Maybe this checks that's only the development branch, not the master branch itself. And now I can keep on building up more and more complex expressions around this. I really can go check anything. And I would argue that this actually makes a lot of smart contract stuff. It will, first of all, it shows how a lot of use cases for Ethereum, you don't actually need consensus. Yeah, well, we were surprised that the set formulas were possible. Yeah. What was, what, was what, was what was possible? The set formulas. Set formulas. In because we, in we had another Bitcoin expert and he, he reached right. the conclusion that it wouldn't be possible. And I thought about it from compiler technology and I said, okay, well, it's, it's long, as long as you don't need boots, you can do anything. Yeah. And you know, a lot of things you don't need loops to go check validity. I mean, for starters, if you need a loop, but the loop isn't that long, you always have to roll it. Yeah. And you know, when we're talking about things like you know, someone authorized to release software. That's not a complex problem. It's just checking a whole bunch of conditions. But I'm I'm surprised now that people aren't doing more with the scripts. Well, they're a gigantic pain in the butt to use. Mm -hmm. I mean, even my own check box on Verify, basically no one's doing it, using it in production yet. If you're writing them just as is. Yeah. It's so much infrastructure do a better job than that. But it's, it's not the fact that it's not possible, but a lot is possible. Well, a lot's possible, but a lot of things people actually want to do isn't. Mm -hmm. All right. Like people may, for instance, want a script to be able to go evaluate a financial condition. Like, you know, the Dow Jones index is above or below or something. Did you say the Dow Jones index? Right? Yeah. Okay. I want to go and make a Bitcoin bet on the Dow Jones index. I mean, <coughs> true. Very funny. <laughs> All right, I will make a Bitcoin bet on the Dow index. Because <laughs> I want to go short the Dow. And <laughs> So that's all well and good, but how the heck am I going to get the information to the Bitcoin script? You know, I'll use a trusted Oracle at that point. I might as well just the very same problem in yeah. Ethereum. You know, at that point, I might as well just build a nice book to a site with, you know, Bootstrap and all the wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. Why even put it in a script? Yeah. Is, it, is it clear to anyone what those set, uh, set signatures mm -hmm. or formulas. Formulas. formulas are? Mm -hmm. Satisfiability formulas. Just a, a class of math problems that you can convert to a class, class of programs to solve them. But it needs a lot of work to, to solve them. And uh, the mathematics prove that certain solutions correspond to certain real world problems. And that's real, that is, uh, that ligt dicht by, uh, by this, by the DEX. Well, the, the, the compiler we wrote was for a specific class of programs for mm -hmm. these set formulas. Mm -hmm. But you could equally well write something like this because it's very close. Okay. I would be very surprised if you couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be able to write any Bitcoin script in this kind of format. As far as I read, it's two years ago. But as far as I remember, it was just nested ends and ors, the set yeah. formulas. And like what I'm doing with this is actually for um, identity applications, at least initially. Um, you know, right now, it's kind of strange because we've got a lot of interest in using blockchain for identity. But a lot of that interest is not really clear <coughs> what the heck blockchain for identity even means or what identity means or like what we're, you know, ultimately, like what are we trying to prevent? And my suspicion is a lot of the more complex things people want to do with keys really boils down to the fact that they can't um, set good conditions on that. You know, here's an example. I mean, I'll show you the delegation one. But even a simpler thing is, well, I want to do key rotation. You know, I have a master PGP key, and I periodically want to rotate it. It's something new. I can 
express this by just having a longer and longer chain of delegated expressions, which in the conjugacy system means so what if it's a few more K data, we really don't care. Computers are fast these days. But if I can't do that in the system itself, I'm going to end up doing this with some crazy blockchain scheme. When people, I think, see things like one name, a lot of that interest comes out of, well, wouldn't it be great if we somehow use the blockchain to record whose keys are to what? Yeah, that'd be great, but if we really need global consensus over this, you know, typically we're not talking about mapping human names to the keys. A lot of the systems being proposed are mapping arbitrary hashes to keys. And given you've thrown away the human aspect of it already, I mean, why have cons worldwide consensus? You don't need worldwide consensus over any numbers. Does, does your name also have proof of uh, burn? Sure, proof of what? Uh, proof of burn, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, they're, 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 they're doing one. that to map human names. I mean, if you've heard of Zuko's triangle, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to square the triangle, if you will. But a lot of applications don't need that. A lot of applications don't even make sense. I mean, with one name, Peter Todd has taken on one name. And it wasn't me. Yeah. Like, I had an active disincentive supporting one name. Because any name that has any relevance to me has already been squatted. <laughs> It, that is also my yeah, not, not, not necessarily objection, but I would also say that you would need something like yeah, the global consensus would only be necessary for global, you know, uh, things things related global. Yeah. And it would be a sin if uh, some guy uh, who happened to have you know just that name. Uh, yeah. Block everyone else out. Yeah. And and again. If you look at the human world, the nice thing about reputations is that they are, in the human world, decentralized in itself. Yeah. So, you know, uh, in the Netherlands you have some footballers being called the nose, the, the nose, yeah. uh, but not necessarily one unique person. There's not some administration where they keep nicknames for people. Yeah. And, um, and that and that is my objection against the yeah the global identity. Also, I mean, look at our example of verifying a Bitcoin download. You met with Vladimir. Your idea of what Vladimir means is local to your social construct, but it's still pretty clear to you. You got the right key, and you can move on from there. I mean, anyone else in this room? If they asked, all right, who's I mean, what's Vladimir's key? They can now ask you, and within their local social construct, the term Vladimir has pretty well-defined meaning. Doesn't mean we should have like Vladimir.com maps just to that Vladimir. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, it'd be nice, it'd be convenient, but that's just unrealistic because nobody is willing to go name their kids something unique. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but there are actually a lot of guys now being called Yari. Yeah. Yari Riemann. Mm. It's a famous, uh, famous Finnish football player yeah. in the Netherlands. But do you actually know, if is there a dynamic uh, naming system uh, you know, like, like in human life where and one day you walk with your nose against the door, you have pain, and then you are being called the nose. And after 20 years, people forget it, and then you lose your... PGP Web of Trust is probably one of the closer things we have. So the Web of Trust. Yeah, PGP. simply because it doesn't make those kind of strong assumptions. On the other hand, it has email addresses in there. So, sorry? Yeah. PGP Web of Trust, PGP keys have email addresses, which are globally unique. Email addresses. Yeah, but so and we use PGP in the office as well, and Dan, he's sitting there, mm -hmm. registered uh, my email address on his key yeah. and uh, key server sent out. Yeah. Everyone looking up my email address is sending you know, yeah. it yeah. is remote, but it's still so, uh, yeah, but that means so that you that. cannot at your email address register. I can no, you can of course. People are looking up and yeah. saying no oh. like hey, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and he, he did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, let's see now. I, I should go sign your PHP key. <laughs> mm -hmm.
to get, get that link to uh, something most people trust, or at least actively distrust. But the PGP, and you mean that because PGP doesn't hide your traffic analysis, huh? Well, I was just saying, like, PGP works there precisely because it allows multiple people to make PGP keys in the same email and save the name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Nothing like you can even import them right into your own key ring. Yeah. Probably not a very good idea because it'll confuse the software, but you know, nothing in the software prevents that. I was actually surprised that you do you really don't know really Ricochet? Ricochet software? Oh Ricochet. Yeah, Ricochet. Yeah. Uh, that sounds familiar. Okay, yeah, because the Tor project uses yeah. it as their as their way to connect to Tor. And I know you are very uh, yeah, into Tor stuff. Yeah, 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 chat. Yeah, 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 I don't with that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do they have um, do they have this kind of pet names thing? I don't uh, actually use Ricochet. Yeah. So you you have it. You mean? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's kind of like uh, Bitcoin addresses, but then shorter. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I have to run these different servers and there. Yeah, they probably map to onion addresses. Who? It would map to onion addresses. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they are hidden services. So when you yeah. run Ricochet, then you uh, have actually a hidden service running on your local system. Yeah. And the key of your uh, the key of your uh, uh, of your hidden service is your ID. Yeah, yeah that's early. Yeah. That's not you know, first people to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I use Pawn, um, which is kind of a high latency email replacement where you just give someone, I mean, if I want to talk to you on Pawn, I go give you a secret. We both register, but all registering is is we just use a rendezvous server and whoever has the same secret gets a shared key. And I can go send you messages. But like this isn't something transferable. I mean, there's no way for him to tell that guy, you know, what my address is, because it's all completely local. It would be a trivial thing for them to do an introduction where you know you could go tell him, here's the thing you need to talk to Peter. But you mean that um, the your connection between you two then is unique? So yeah. there is not an address for an outsider because that address has first to be made. Yeah, well, well, this is why pond, there's no such thing as spam on pond, right? Because you manually approve <coughs> of everyone who's able to communicate to you. And it's pond. Pond, yeah. P-O-N-D. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. We're gonna look at it. yeah, it's interesting software. It's um, not that widely used. And unfortunately, the author of it has been maintained lately, but I mean, I still use it. Ricochet, similar concepts just some um, in uh, real time. And I think what's interesting about both cases is again, stuff like this is useful. Because I mean, imagine on Ricochet, I want to go and say, all right, I'm going to rotate my keys to the next server. And imagine a scheme for it where I would be able to. Use my master identity to go say, no, for the purpose of sending me a message on Ricochet, I use this. And that becomes a signature that links one identity to another purpose. Much the same way as if you look at the PGP um, standard, well, there's identity packets for you know emails, images, and names, and they all are linked from master keys. But because it's baked in the standard, it's incredibly flexible. You know, it's, that's all it can do. And there's no way to manage it in a more intelligent way. Talking about uh, oracles, are you familiar with the uh, Paul Storch's Tixie Marks markets? Yeah, I did. Um, I was actually asked to do a review of uh, Truthcoin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. You have done, or we are you're going to? Uh, I mean, I reviewed what I could. It's stupidly complex. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mostly reviewed what their strategy would be on consensus and you know what kinds of like big picture goals it would have. Because the actual math on why they think the thing is um, why they think they, they think you know actions of actors in it are economically rational is very, very subtle. Yeah. And it's not clear to me my understanding of it was correct, but it might work. 
Because, yeah, if it, if it, something like that does work, then create the announcer uh, with the script uh, yeah. stuff like this. It, it's hard, though, because you could never write a script of this form that was sufficient to completely encapsulate the entire truth coin consensus. So what you would actually do is create, you know, some kind of special purpose yeah. opcode that refers to something external. I mean, even a simpler example being wrong well, time. If you have the ability to refer to the current time, you're going to end up writing signatures that can go from being valid yeah. to invalid, yeah. which is very undesirable. What you probably want is, and I didn't really show it here, but you would actually have a set of arguments that expressions evaluate against. And those arguments would be your signature. And the signature itself, for a particular purpose, like say signing a software release, could claim that the time was this. Your protocol around verifying the software release would then check that claims time was reasonable. I mean, being before now would be a good start. And from that, then you would go on to verifying everything in a deterministic way. How you how that apply to the truth coin? Well, you know, you kind of say, all right, check the results of this bet. And you'd hope the truth coin consensus doesn't go backwards, but it's true. Yeah, I guess at some point you want to have confirm it all by doing some sort of transaction on blockchain. Yeah. Other transaction can be referred to it or somehow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> and in the context of this kind of thing running within a chain, maybe if you included the truth coin consensus in your yeah, consensus really. definition, but now you've like, added a ton more code to Bitcoin, for instance. Yeah. It's very so when I have some sort of like an SPV proof from Truthcoin, you know? Yeah, and SPV proofs are ugly because now you have things that depend on miners claiming to be true. Yeah. You know, if I'm a miner with like 50 percent hashing power, I might be in a position where I'd like to go fake the SPV proofs. Yeah. And the rest of the network isn't going to check that. So even if the prediction marks itself work, then it's still uh, yeah. a big problem to get it. Yeah. yeah, the prediction mark itself might work, but then miners might override the link between other scripts in the yeah. prediction market. You know, this is why I'm really, really dubious about merging on side chains. Because the whole model of them is essentially will trust miners. And hope that we set up incentives that they stay trustworthy, but who knows if that's actually true. A lot easier to not not do that. Could you, for some time, address the topic of identity and? Yeah, I mean, what can't your list there? <laughs> I would just pick, pick, pick well, a few. I, I think, like, actually, the generalization I can make is usually these things are trying to map human repo names to cryptographic identities. You know, like one name is a good example of that, where they're trying to make a namespace where you can query the namespace, there's global consensus over the namespace maps to crypto identities. I think I mentioned before how, I mean, even if that tech works, I'm really dubious that it's useful because names get squatted. Yeah, it, it puts the overhead on the wrong side in the yeah. sense that, you know, the, the, if only all the all the Bosch people in the Netherlands who have the, the first name Bosch, yeah. you know, then so then you end up with Bosch 1900, uh, yeah. 2000 and such, and then it's, it's uh, I mean, you don't want to call yourself a uh, yeah. member uh, somewhat. Well, uh, I mean, for, people, for, yeah. for people that don't have any passport or, or bank account, that could come in handy by people in the third world countries. But I mean, putting stuff on a blockchain doesn't solve that problem. No, but at least they could, like world citizenship, which is on the list, they have like a gathering of people and they acknowledge their existence. Yeah. But see, you don't need global consensus for that. Like most of these systems, they assume global consensus, which I don't think you need for that. Right. You know, like the PGP is a good example where for all the signatures, all the key servers, all the infrastructure PGP has, there's no consensus. You know, it's all best effort. And you can use PHP without any of that infrastructure by simply passing keys from one person to another. You know, if you're trying to convince me who Vladimir is, 
you can just give me the signature that you made on his key. I've got a copy of his key, now I know that you're making that claim, and I can go pass it on to him. He can then go pass me on that other signature with your email, and then I can go look at it and say, well, I have no reason to think this is valid, and then throw it away. But nowhere in there do I need global consensus. Well, let me turn this thing around. What could you uh, think of situations where global consensus could be interesting in terms of uh, e-identity? I think one name would be interesting, except it's too late. Like the one name model of registering something in the global consensus, but it's too late now. You know, I mean, imagine if DNS worked that way from day one, right? Where all DNS addresses were some distributed, decentralized, first comes first serve message, you know, base layer. I think it would be a very interesting system, but that doesn't exist yet. Or, oh, sorry, it didn't exist, therefore, going forward, Nobody will ever opt into it because mm -hmm. any system that tries to gain that role will just get squatted all to hell. I actually think that um, I know that Google uses numbers. I mean, you, you can say that you are a boss the one on Google, but your, your URL ends up being a number. And I actually think that if you would start such a new service, you know, uh, Twitter, Flutter, or whatever. And um, you, you should actually be, because Google tried to solve it, mm. but that way they uh, remove the incentive for people to yeah. uh, go um, squat at least their own name. Yeah. Because I know people who, who are all the time keeping social media the newest in, in uh, you know, to, to squat their name. And um, so, yeah, so commercially speaking, uh, there is an incentive for having uh, scarcity in that, I think. Yeah, but if there's commercially, if there's commercial interest involved, they're not going to want a decentralized system. Mm -hmm. <coughs> decentralized systems fall into a black hole. So there's a disincentive to use them, yet you're not going to make money implementing it. You know, Facebook, again, I think is another example where on Facebook, for the most part, names are just names and Facebook uses intelligent algorithms that analyze the social graph to figure out which person are you most likely to want to be introduced to, given a certain name. You know, like if you were one of my friends on Facebook and you search for Peter Todd, Facebook would think, all right, if you're more closely connected to that Peter Todd than that Peter Todd, therefore I will pop up that Peter Todd first in the search results. Even though, you know, there's probably a thousand Peter Todd's on Facebook. Yeah, but there are even there are hundreds of Peter Thoughts connected to your physical Peter Thought thought as well. well, well so well, your virtual identities. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying, my point is that because it has access to the social graph, but like Facebook algorithm has access to the social graph. That disambiguates people with the same name very effectively. Mm -hmm. And the system is still very use usable, even though it doesn't have global consensus over names. And it's global consensus over identifiers, but the identifiers are just meaningless numbers. You know, anyone can create a globally unique identifier, just guess a 128 bit number out of thin air. That's easy. Yeah, but it needs to be linked to you. So, I mean, well, I'm not I mean, really sure why you don't see any benefit in having fine. some kind of global identity because at the, at the moment you basically already have one. But because you can only be here today in the Netherlands because you have a, a, a passport which is linking you when, and it's, it's a central system. So yeah. they type your password number in, it checks your central database. The thing is, when you use the global identity, you can use it. Right. If you start with a notion of a human being in a human sense, mm -hmm. there's no way to go from that to a number in a useful way. But you need to identify yourself somehow. So you're currently linked to your passport number, and you well, might try to I do that with more than one passport. Yeah, but in a global system with global consensus, you could maybe could have one. Well, I mean, you passport have numbers we don't have global consensus over. No, but they're 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 verifiable. You can check them. Well, yeah. no. Passport numbers are a centralized system where the centralization points are the individual countries. Yeah. 
So can't, should that not be replaced by some kind of global identity system so that you can Why identify not? yourself if you do transactions? But again, yeah. we, we have a global identity system. It just goes back to the people making the claims, which are the respective governments. You know, that, that's actually like a web of trust. It's just that the biggest nodes in the web of trust have to be really big. You know, they're governments that have you know, said, from our point of view, Peter Todd corresponds to, you know, this passport, and there are 20 other Peter Todds in Canada who also have passports, but, you know, if you see one, you'll know that they are they map to that kind of identity in the way that we can roughly But at, at the moment, it's, it's, it's centralized, it's run by the governments, but it's also only the governments who can verify it, because well, I have no means of verifying your passport. Well, actually, it's yeah. only the guy at the customs no, actually, office actually, that actually, types in your number and gets access to the Canadian well, or no, American. That's, that's actually not how it works. No, it's the other way around. Passports themselves are self-proof. They contain um, uh, chips these days on them that are signed mm -hmm. by the government. In there. Yeah. And you can verify that if you know what the government's PGP key is, essentially, you know, you can verify that they actually validly signed that chip and that passport mm -hmm. that is making the claim that the person in front of you with possession of it is a Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. You can't go from the passport number to the person. Those databases don't actually exist in a way that's publicly, you know, in a way that's even accessible to a border security. How was it, would it be possible? Well, unless you're on the list. Yeah. Well, like governments generally do not make those lists available to anyone but their own internal offices. Yeah. Like even the border security people often don't have that information available. You know, it's usually done in the self-proving model. Like prior to any of these databases, when you showed up with that piece of paper, it was the evidence that your government had said that yes, you are a citizen. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any other identifier, and the notion of identity was kind of a fuzzy thing. I mean, it still is. But you mean, yeah, what you what you mean is that when you say that your passport is your global identifier, mm -hmm. then your response is it's not because all the governments are the, the I mean they they are in itself decentralized or self authorized or how you yeah. call it. Yeah, and keep in mind a passport is just a claim. Mm -hmm. It's not an identifier. It's a claim that the identity on the passport has an attribute to it, which is it corresponds to a Canadian citizen, in my mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. But that's not a unique claim. It's not like that's my identity. My identity is actually separate from that. You know, that is a claim on my identity, but it's not my identity. If we're talking about the haves, and we're not talking about the have-nots, the people that don't have a passport that are are poor, living in countries where we can't reach them with money, for example. And I can't imagine that there's no way of uh, inventing a useful application of a... a well, a so you ask yourself, why can't you send those people money? With Bitcoin, you can't. All right. But then yeah, but you can't do a lot of other things. At the, even, at the, even at the moment, if I, if I have to, for instance, register as a shareholder uh, in a company in the UK, I need to take my passport to a public notary in the UK who is going to verify me. He's going to write another certificate. He's putting a lot of stamps on it. And then I can send that form to the company's house to get well, registered as a shareholder. So here, here's the interesting thing, though. If you came from North <coughs> Korea and you tried that, you would get rejected because North Korean identity isn't considered valid. Mm -hmm. The claim by the North Korean government that you are a citizen is not considered valid. No, so what that's... But <laughs> North is. Korea is considered valid, right? Like, this goes back to the level yeah. of trust. The UK government doesn't trust the North Korean government. You know, no amount of tech is going to solve that problem. Yeah, you mean that, that citizens of North Korea will not have the right to do anything in the UK because the UK government... Well, it's not that they them. don't have the right. It's that their uh, claim, their identity documents claim, making those claims are not considered valid. Yeah, but do you mean that the UK doesn't seem just like you know, just like uh, Israel doesn't accept the Palestinian uh, authority, or do you mean that they acknowledge that North Korea exists, but they don't for whatever reason? They, they don't trust the claim on identity, right, of that type of passport. 
Okay. Right. Oh, it's not that your identity, mm -hmm. like you, it's not that you don't have an identity, it's that you don't have that particular type of proof around your identity. I mean, in Canada, right, if I want to be shareholder corporation, I don't have to show anything. There's absolutely no requirements whatsoever to put your name on paper. It's entirely based on if the issue comes up later, you, sh you better provide convincing evidence that the person who signed that document and was intended to be the shareholder is the same person who's in front of the judge. But you have multiple passports? Yeah. <coughs> but you are Canadian. Yeah, and most Australian. Oh, okay. And many people end up with multiple <coughs> passports just out of administrative problems. Yeah, yeah. You know, a passport isn't unique. British, probably. Uh, if you, you don't get special rights for Britain. If you are born before 1980, then you are also British. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, a friend of ours, he, uh, uh, he, he is Canadian, born in the Netherlands, never been to Canada except uh, for a few times. But he, he wanted to work in the Netherlands for some time. And then he he was told that he had to go to Paris yeah. to register as a British embassy yeah. in Paris. Yeah. And he didn't know he was British actually. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't want to be Canadian also. Yeah. He, I mean he feels himself Dutch. So um, yeah, it's, uh, and I also know of Dutch people who were born before 1976 in Suriname. Yeah. And they, uh, I don't know the exact story, but they are born on Dutch soil because yeah. soil, I mean soil, soil, soil. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because before 1975, Suriname was part of the Netherlands. Yeah. And, but he, nowadays, when he travels to the Netherlands, he travels through Belgium because the border between Belgium and the Netherlands is easy. Yeah. But if he goes this direct, then it gives problems or something. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, well, yeah. at least you see, at least see you is being considered to be a U.S. citizen. But yeah, that'd be no end of problems. Yeah, then he would uh, get through easily. You mean? No, no. If you're a U.S. citizen, the IRS goes after you. <laughs> yeah. Right, because if, uh, yeah, if you're a U.S. citizen, you must file a tax return every year with the U.S. You you mean every year you have to be in the U.S.? No, you file your tax if you are a U.S. citizen, it doesn't matter if you've never set foot in the U.S. ever in your entire life, mm -hmm. you are obliged to file a tax return with them every year. Oh. You probably won't have to pay any taxes, well, they might, but you must send in your tax return. Okay. And if you don't, they'll um, give you, pen you know, very expensive penalties. Including people who had no idea that they were U.S. citizens, according to the U.S. government. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like there'd be people who showed up one day and they had, just didn't realize that the implication of their, you know, them being born in the states was that they are de facto a U.S. citizen. You know, yeah. like being born say, on vacation. Yeah. yeah. It's listed in their passport. Well, yeah, I was born in the U.S., but I'm a citizen. You know, citizen of the U.K. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll uh, get back taxes. I was trying to finish the question of uh, e identity, and you said the payment uh, to uh, a, a person in a third world country could by, be done by bitcoins. But how could well, you then, uh, how could you do, uh, be sure that not that is going to the uh, horse races with the money? Well, you, you really want to. <coughs> How, how can you be sure that the right person is getting it? Exactly. But I, the government and NTC can fix that problem. No, no, but that's why I'm, I'm still looking for this special uh, uh, role for e identities on a blockchain or something else. Yeah, I, I, don't, think don't, see that. I, I don't think they help. Do you guys know the uh, project Identity P? Yeah, why, but it's, it's a reputation based. Yeah, it's but it's not without blockchain. So, but, no, yeah. but it's, yeah. Well, I mean, whatever trust stuff works, right? Because you're trusting that someone else knows so someone, yeah, yeah, someone else. But, you know, just government identity by itself doesn't help much. I mean, people are able to go fake that or borrow people's identity with the same name all the time. And again, like the concept where it does help, it's just a claim made by someone. Yeah, you know? of course. It's a claim that that person with that name happens to live at that address. And if you're pretty sure 
the person you think you're paying is at that address and that name. Address, you mean Bitcoin address? Oh, no, no, I mean like physical oh, address. Physical address. Right, because yeah. then that would in turn map to a cryptographic key, mm -hmm. which you then use to go drive, say, a Bitcoin address or sign a Bitcoin address. Now, there's uh, a lot of social media accounts. They want you to uh, register your phone number okay. in case you uh, lost yeah. your uh, password. Yeah. And they keep working you yeah. to the point that you lose access to your account because you have to provide your phone yeah. number. Yeah. So, in other words, you lose access to your account because you know some social media wants to give you want to have your phone number well, in case I mean, you lose access to your account. The reason why they do that is pretty simple, which is yeah. that they're lazy and would rather let someone else deal with that end problem. It's scary yeah, thing yeah, is people that are hacking the phone company. It is useful information, I guess. No, I mean. For many of their perspective, it's just they don't want to have to deal with people being locked out of their accounts. It's incredibly expensive. And phones are something which is a nice second factor. The problem is, I mean, often then people are losing access to their phones, especially by people hacking, hacking that, because the security of phones is terrible. You know, it's easy to go and intercept text messages, do all kinds of shenanigans. And then people are then losing access to their accounts because someone hacks the phone system. And they use it, for instance, reset passwords. But it's something from the perspective of a web developer. I mean, it's not their problem. You know, it kind of helps them helps them clean their hands of it, which is very ugly. No easy answers there. I don't know. I think we should all start talking to each other according to our PGP keys. And I'll just introduce myself as uh, <laughs> 37EC. Yeah, it, would, it would be cool if you, if you could uh, uh, encrypt. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I was thinking if you could uh, encrypt uh, your own voice with PGT. Something. Well, have you seen how um, Signal works? Redfone. Yeah, Redfone. Mm -hmm. It makes the assumption that human beings can recognize each other's voice in real time, and that faking that's very difficult. And then if I go call you on Signal, it'll pop up uh, two words mm -hmm. that are randomly picked mm -hmm. and correspond to the session key of our conversation. And if you say those two words and I say those two words, we know no one in the middle is intercepting a phone call. Mm -hmm. cool. you know, and that's really based on our identity in terms of voice. But does it also use PGP? No. Nope. Only, only the, those. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the developers want signal. Think that's just too complex. Yeah, they'd rather just stick with. Think yeah, because some understand. some weeks ago, there was some Dutch uh, company from Nijmegen. They were being caught because they sold uh, PGP phones or something. And. Uh, but I don't know if mm -hmm. other people know more about this. Because they were yeah. being called because the government was of the opinion that they were making uh, crimes. Uh, oh, yeah. Like well, where is, uh, the yeah. sold them exclusively to criminals. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. Then, then it's difficult to deny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they pressed the phones with PTP and, and some security and encryption. Okay, but it was, clear, but it was clearly aimed for, for the professional criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Bad okay. precedent set. I mean, if they succeed in that case, they'll go after the people find signal next. That's why, uh, you know, the U.S. is busy trying to outlaw a lot of this stuff among one of many other countries. Fortunately, it was a strong one, I think, that they implemented. Yeah. But that is actually what I like. To do. So, for example, about Ricochet, is that it is pretty easy. Yeah. You just start it, you have the address. Because uh, PGP, I know it for more than 10 years. But I've always considered it as a proof of nerd system. Yeah. And uh, because it, I mean, in, in practice, you know, when do you really, yeah, I guess yesterday or last Friday it was a real use case for me. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, and, yeah. uh, but in most of the times, it is yeah, it is pretty difficult. I mean, I think the hard thing with PGP is 
the UI of GNU Fusion sucks. There's a lot of problems there, but even if you fix those problems, the very idea that someone can be separate from a key is just too conceptually hard, I think, for many users. You know, they'll never be able to understand that. And yet, a lot of people look at it and think, all right, well, because, you know, this big chunk of the population doesn't understand how to use it, therefore it must be a failure, which I think is completely wrong. Now, if you're running a Bitcoin exchange, your needs for security are way higher than the average person. Mm -hmm. And it's way more important that you get it correct. So for you, maybe it's worth going to the effort of using PGP. But the fact that you can do that is a huge success. You know, it doesn't matter that like, many 5% of people are going to do that. If the 5% you need it do, that's successful. It's a niche success, but it's still successful. And a lot of people just want to throw the, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, if you will, mm -hmm. and say that all PHP is a failure, which you know, it's still the best we've got for that kind of that kind of need. And hopefully, you know, these kind of systems will help improve on that. But I would be very surprised if you know your so-called average person was using that, especially directly. Um, I think we're drawing to the end, if I'm right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe uh, an idea to do a small recap for the you know for the visitors. What uh, what did you think of today, and can we how can we improve it for tomorrow? Just like you uh, told uh, this morning, this is for you also a new thing, and uh, so. Uh, uh, into the clock again. Uh, I I I, I leave you out, and then uh, David. Uh... Yeah, stay the last one. Okay. Yeah, it was a good day. Lo yeah. Lots of new information. So, but uh, because I was wondering, maybe for because uh, uh, the, the we now have we didn't really have a, a real structure. <laughs> And I mean, I don't expect that we suddenly can make it very structured. Mm -hmm. But uh, did you expect it to be very structured? And no, I didn't. No. Okay. No, um, I didn't expect a lot of um, structure. Also, based on the uh, the email you you sent out. Yeah, I, I already so, said that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I knew there were lots of different topics uh, mm -hmm. that that would be uh, uh, tackled. Um, so for me, it was. It was good. Yeah. And fine as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you, um, do you need more structure, more, if you got concrete questions? Uh, it could, maybe I expected a bit more structure, but as it went, it's mm -hmm. all right for me. Yeah. yeah. No worries. You had, you had this list of points. I th thought we. Yeah, were the, yeah. The, the problem was that I thought you know I have to put up something, mm -hmm. and um, but I also know that uh, with people like Peter, you're going to talk about anything. Is my impression. <laughs> and so. Uh, it's fairly accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I mean, it's, <coughs> and as you already told me through email, this is also kind of new for you. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I thought, you know, I have to put up something. And, uh, yeah? Yeah, uh, I'm fine. Okay. That's very interesting. But indeed, there were a number of topics on the website, so I expected more like a, a lecture uh, format. But that's fine with me. Peter, yourself? I think the main thing is, if I was going to do uh, do something more structured, I think I'd want to go and have it prepared in advance and give people an idea of what levels to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I were to make it more structured, I think that would by, nece by necessity make the audience that it would appeal to um, more narrow. Mm -hmm. You know, because with more structure, I mean, it's much harder to go and tailor things to whoever actually shows up. Mm -hmm. you know, I could have easily, for instance, done up a big lesson plan with something very high level or low level, but whoever doesn't fall into that band would be much less interested. Mm -hmm. So, man, yeah, that's a trade off.
for the next time uh, to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah. Carol? Um, well, personally, I would love to have some hand on case. That would be very nice. But overall, it was good uh, to get some new information about your thoughts also about developing and also uh, the, the, the Python thing. Yeah. It's nice to see. But I would love to do that in practice myself. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, some examples. Let me work on it. And, uh, yeah. We can learn more about Bitcoin itself in developing about uh, maybe apps or applications. <laughs> So, so, in other words, you would have liked um, uh, yeah, the coding, uh, the coding part. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, okay. So, for example, uh, uh, that you uh, that we would say, you know, uh, that, that we uh, the previous time we had, uh, you you make up your own uh, task, or you think of your own task, and you try to build it. And then afterwards, we uh, evaluate your task, just like the last year with uh, the coding. Uh, uh, so, so, so more, yeah, more practical. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I would like. I would like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> well, yeah, I agree. Before the lunch, you showed us a few commands. So I downloaded the Bitcoin daemon and started it with Rechtest. I didn't at first, so my Bitcoin uh, full client was broken and needed to rethink uh, nice. So I got a fast process. Would be interesting to know how to separate those two with the config file and have the 10 commands you showed with the BTC commands I yeah. didn't get. So those kinds of things are interesting to me. So we've got two votes in favor of that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I found it very interesting anyway, but I think the part that they're talking about is the part that also went really fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how long we spent on it, maybe half an hour. Yeah. You went like, okay, it's uh, calculating the signature, it's doing this, it's checking that, you, 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 here it makes the transaction, it sends the transaction to the net, done. Okay, well, I maybe understand it, but if I have to do it myself now, uh, <laughs> yeah? Um, so then that part would probably be a bit bit more deeper or make more uh, the details of what it's actually doing and which yeah. ones there are and like we briefly had a discussion about okay it's not taking all the inputs it just looks yeah. and it fills it with cloud okay that's not immediately obvious yeah. what other things are there that where it might fill or what other yeah. safety checks would you uh, have to build into sort of more production codes to to, to make sure that the, Things are validated yeah. and we don't shooting uh, stupid transactions into the net. Right? So for me, for me, that that part, uh, yeah, would also maybe be uh, good if maybe mm -hmm. tomorrow we can go and be yeah, tomorrow uh, we still have possibility. Yeah. So and then uh, yeah, I think we heard a few things of new developments uh, where things might be going. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm also a bit interested in maybe a little bit of the even more longer term. Uh, future, uh, like not okay. What's the next feature that is coming in the next release? Where is this thing going? Yeah, is it, uh, uh, is it actually is it is it actually going to scale, or is it actually going to be adopted uh, worldwide, or not? Where are the technical problems? Yeah, that there might be legal problems and whatever. There's a different story. But you told us it's going to explode in ten. He said it's going to explode in ten years. Yeah, but I mean. <laughs> No, the sun will. The sun. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years ago. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not giving any guarantee for that. Or there might be a Bitcoin 2.0 or 3.0 in 10 years, but okay, fine. But what would then, uh, do we have any ideas what that then would be looking like? Which problems would that new version then, then try to, to solve? Uh, I'll admit, I think you just said two very contradictory talks. <laughs> yeah. But both interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually completely uh, forgot you, uh, but uh, uh, let's, uh, let's do the Bitcoin call. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah I, I like being uh, open and uh, mm -hmm. flexible. I mean, I am, uh, I'm in an easy position because of my own and things got a little bit boring for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I could go downstairs and start doing my own stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, if you've got... Uh, 
I still do it tomorrow, but yeah. I think this time is okay. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it doesn't matter for you uh, the structure or not. Or, uh, okay. mm. Yeah, same for me. I have no objections to the formal. I think it's um, it's worth it. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Okay. I like that part. Okay. Tomorrow we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, given you guys seem to like the hands on, go for the Python Bitcoin loop and come back with your questions. I'm not very good. I'm not kidding. And frankly, I mean, it's a bit tricky for me to anticipate in advance like mm -hmm. what kinds of things people mm -hmm. yeah. find interesting or confusing about that kind of stuff. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I know backwards and forwards. I wrote the library. It's very hard for me to like see that in a fresh mind. So, yeah, the question for me also was I, I didn't exactly know your, uh, <coughs> I, I, I don't exactly know if you are a real good programmer. Uh, I can justify that, or I can. Don't worry, I don't try either. Yeah, no, but I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you have, you know, you have people who have good thoughts, but not, not necessarily good code. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if we could ask you to judge our code. But uh, I mean, uh, we can always try, I guess. We're to try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Benny, you uh, you, uh, I like it a lot uh, like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope we still have enough questions for tomorrow. So I do want to dream up some questions, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, no, no complaints from me. You uh, yeah, some more, some more hands on. Mm -hmm. The structure is okay. Okay. So the, yeah, that's a lesson for the next time or for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. okay. And yeah, then maybe uh, so because. Are you here tomorrow? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is anyone meet here tomorrow? No. The. Maybe a uh, good thing, uh, Cornelie Poi will call tomorrow in the afternoon. It's not completely sure how late, but the chances are greater that he will be later than <laughs> earlier. So uh, so it will be around four, I guess. Um, so maybe, I mean, you know, as a task for yourself, uh, try to put down some questions so we can Put the questions tomorrow morning down, open, and try to get them solved, or at least uh, addressed. If you, were in, yeah, if you want something like that hands on, um, the code is right in that examples directory, but see if you can um, take the code that signs transactions, right, for the pay to pub key hash example, and add it to the code that does time stamping, as in make the ladder. Sign the transactions as well, and that's the kind of simple task that still touches upon a lot of understanding. If you want to try something out, good way to start. And in general, understand how the how the example actually work. Yeah, yeah, that's what the yeah. The, uh, if I may. Uh, uh, I see this as a work in progress. So, uh, and uh, um, to uh, we can now go drink something. Uh, yeah. I hear. And, uh, is, are there any plans for dinner, or are people leaving? Or? Uh, I, I don't really know uh, what. Uh, I don't know if Peter told us uh, enough of us by now. But. Hey, I like drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I mean, I don't know. If, do we have to get out of here before 12? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Okay. Um, uh, now, but uh, uh, I will uh, hold it on. Yeah. Now, how long do you think it's on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.